Word, sound, power. Word is the sound of power. Sound the alarm, the power is gone. The only word we have is our. Ladies and gentlemen of Warsaw Stowe, how you feeling out there? You feeling all right on a Saturday and the sun shining? We bought it, you know. Give us a wave. So, uh, we're Lyrics Organics. Uh, we're a charitable organisation that represents lyrical and positive music and poetry. And we have been on tour. There is a revolution awaiting warriors. I recognise many righteous soldiers. I will fight with you or alone. Like the king I am, reclaim my throne. So Lyrics Organics Relay is basically a 360 degree live experience. So it immerses the audience and there's four podiums. As a backdrop, uh, we've got live art going on. We're doing things with live music that people haven't seen before. Whether you're expecting us or not, we're here. This is what's going to happen. I hit it like this. Like a... So Lewis Organic is something I started up uh, about four years ago as a reaction to the live music scene and music industry in general. So the idea was to strip away all the pretenses and make it just about the artists and just about the audiences. Lady of the hood, lady of the hood. What we did initially was to donate all our money to charity. I've been working a full-time job all the while, uh, and so it's always been a hobby of mine. In terms of high profile, I guess a lot of people talk about Ed Sheeran. I mean, his trajectory has been incredible. One of the reasons I started Lewis Organics Up was because I was good friends with him and I saw this was the kind of thing which he really needed a place where he could express himself lyrically. If anyone wants to grab me some shower gel and bring it over, I can have a wash whilst I'm up here, which would be helpful as well. Natty's, Natty's a very, very close friend of mine and um, he's an amazing, incredibly charismatic guy. Freestyle rapper and beatboxer and workshop leader and we're doing an increasing amount of work together. Who cares about the rain? Yeah, I bring the pain. Me rapping on the podium, is that insane? Of course it is. Here we go now, you know we're rocking it. Everybody, yeah, you know, come look what I'm talking it. When I say lyrics, you say relay. Lyrics. Really blown away by something and your hairs are standing on end at the show then it's irrelevant what the background is it's just music at the end of the day and so i always get the greatest pleasure by kind of watching the reactions of audiences and as long as i get that then i'm happy yeah, yeah. I feel really privileged to be able to give so many artists that platform to actually reach places and people that they wouldn't otherwise be able to. Now we're on road and on tour and we've touched so many people around London, it's been, yeah, really blessed. It must be difficult as well when it's raining like today. This has been the only day that has really threatened to rain hard and we got away with the first show, it's been absolutely fine. We'll see what happens in the second show. Right, ladies and gentlemen of Walson Stowe, I'm very sorry that we're going to have to stop the show there because weather prevails nonetheless. In spite of the weather, we've had a lot of fun.
Well, I'm working on my first full-length recording, and um, at the moment we're just recording vocals and live cello. Some of these parts are really crazy. It's just like, oof. <laughs> organizing the recording process and who I'd like to work with, where and when. There is that sense that this is the music I want to make and we're going to do that. And tell me about the guys out there, the guys helping you put this all together. Well, Chris runs the studio and I'd, um, um, I'm working with him because he's taking me out of my comfort zone. The bells of the bridge. Yeah. My mum took me to piano lessons at four years old. I think that's how I sort of got into it, <laughs> into music. And then I decided to play the cello in secondary school. I had a friend whose ex-boyfriend was running the jam session at the jazz cafe. And um, she invited me along and I had a great time. She said, oh, you should get up and sing. And I was like, oh, I don't sing. I see you in me. And she said, okay, why don't you come back in a few weeks time? So um, I wrote, a song and uh, the guy who ran, who ran the jam session said you can't do that here, you can't just turn up and sing a solo song. I said I've invited all my family, all my friends, I've got to do this. So he said okay just this one time and it went down really well so from that point I kind of had that feeling for being the performer and also being the composer and so after that I was encouraged to apply to music college and the people I met, the things I learned, it completely opened my eyes to the creative music industry. Before that, I kind of knew people played at home or they learned, or they were pop stars. I didn't have a great awareness of that huge bracket in between. <laughs> oh my goodness. She was smashing teacups yesterday. <laughs> smashing teacups, she was beating up little children that we hired in especially for the job. Smacking them. No, it's always chill, isn't it? There was a phase when I'd go to bed and then suddenly get an idea and I'd have to like jump out of bed, sing it into my phone, go to sleep and then sort it out in the morning. Some artists don't feel that way. They don't feel like they have something to say. They do feel that they have a nice voice or maybe they dance well. Maybe they just look great. It is an industry and um, that does turn over and generate someone a lot of money. It's not something that interests me uh, to have someone tell me what to sing. You are the light that guides my path, oh yeah. There's a certain type of, of image of black woman that seems to be most prevalent in the media. And so therefore that seems to be the benchmark of how to, to look and dress and speak and behave. I'm used to that sense of being different and I don't necessarily take it as a negative. You are the voice the that makes things right. Is it a good one, is the question. Doesn't matter which one it was. <laughs> no, I like the last Blindfolds on, everyone. <laughs> okay, go for it. I need to cut that. I think there are tons and tons of great artists succeeding. They're making a living off of music, they're travelling around, they're doing well, out of just having a 5,000 people on their mailing list, and that's all it takes, you know? If you think each one of those people is spending 10 quid on a record, or five quid on a record, you know, you're not doing badly. And that's without any gig takings, without any extra stuff. I think there's, there's been an inherent greediness in the music industry for a very, very long time, without people realising what's enough, thinking, what can I get, what can I get, what can I get? And more and more people who love music in particular realise that, wow, what a privilege to just be able to do this. And you don't want to be a superstar with all the weights and responsibilities that carries. I think she's in a great position. She's making her own record. She's doing it all off her own esteem. I mean, why wouldn't you get behind that? She's a, a great writer and a great artist and, and a really nice person, as you can see. I'm paying for part of this myself. Some people have sponsors who will pay for it for them. And some people have record labels to pay for that part of the process. But if you don't, then yeah, it's self-funded. If you're doing what you want to do and you're living your dream, then what's the excess? Why worry about not having an excess of money, you know? I wouldn't do anything else.
Excuse me, guys. Sorry to interrupt you. What sort of music do you both listen to? I'm not signed to a record label. I'm trying to prove you can succeed without one. I've supported artists like Chase and Status, Chipmunk, Skepta, Akala. I have personally sold over 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. I've actually sold over 10,000 copies of these on my own. Believe me when I say it wasn't easy. So what's your name? Shaldo. Just like that. When it comes to music, you really got to be willing to put the work in yourself, you know? You can't just expect it to happen overnight. I don't, I don't remember how exactly it happened, but I just started coming out, speaking to people, telling them about my music, selling my CDs, and it grew from there. I actually used the money that I make from CD sales in order to finance my career as an artist. I'm a full-time artist, full-time musician, and I love it. <laughs> I trained in Shaolin Kung Fu out in China when I was 18. I, I traveled over there on my own. And while I was there, it, it really gave me an opportunity to look into myself and, and learn. You have to put the work in, you know. Kung Fu, the literal translation is hard work. I ruptured a ligament as a, as a result of um, too much training. I've been on crutches for about three months. Can I jump in a circle? Is that all right? Thank you. Let's do this. Guys, settle for five. I net seven when seven water to have a bind. I get seven in middle with my level and find regret setting in heavy when I pedal. They like collect melanin. So elegant, so low regiment. Many buried under my flow, just like sediment. You don't have to clap, you're going to make me embarrassed. I don't really listen to that sort of music personally, but um, the way you came over and like, just sold it to us, you want to kind of help them out. So. It's my job. If I, if I couldn't rap on demand, I'm not a very good rapper, to be fair. Oh no, actually, I'm going to try this couple here. He was polite. He was, you know, putting his case across and he just wanted me to, to listen to him. So fine, yeah, I did. I asked them to have a listen to the music because I think it's kind of crazy to try and sell some, somebody something that they've never heard of and that generally makes a sale for me. I do nothing when I'm injured. He, yeah. He's got balls. You can have a shot someone, but not really. <laughs> I've sold in the snow. I've sold in thunder and lightning. I have, however, been stopped by the police on numerous occasions. I think that's probably my greatest achievement on the street, selling a CD to a police officer. Very nice to meet you both. Thank yeah, you, you very much for your time. Have a good day, yeah? See you later. See you later. If you're around in the street all day and people are just saying no to you, it can be quite demoralizing. It's like, oh, you know, you're out here on the street, you must not be very good. And it's like, well, no, I'm out here on the street because I am very good and because I care that much. People are all easy to download music for free, but nobody really wants to pay for music these days. And what people need to understand is that as an independent artist, yes, I definitely feel it if you're downloading my tracks for free off YouTube or whatever, because 79p is not gonna hurt you, but it definitely helps me. When it first started, it was very difficult. Um, you know, I struggled. I pay all my bills, pay my taxes, etc., etc. You know, if you're not prepared for the journey and for the struggle that it takes to be an, an, a musician, and you shouldn't be, a, you shouldn't really be doing music in the first place. That's what I love about coming out on the street because it allows me to express myself as who I am, and that is something that I want to do. I don't want to be the next whoever's popular now. I want to be Xiao Do. I want to be the guy that other people are looking at and being like, yeah, you should do it like him. Eventually, that's what they will say. Hopefully, anyway. He sounds like a pretty independent person. He yeah. Knows what he wants, really. Yeah. He gets it. Success is relative. It means different things for different people. For me, success is being able to live comfortably as a, as a musician and be able to make good music. I'm almost there. I'm going to head off to London, make some more fans. So, yeah, good speaking to you. Take care. Thank you. Okay, we're here at the Tunbridge Wells Forum. It's a special place for me. 20 years I've been coming to this place doing shows and performing. So we have to sneak down through the undergrowth. This is what happens in Kent. Totally different vibe to London. And then this is it. Yeah, I like that, I like that. It's a nice break. <laughs> so the Lyrics Relay Tour unfortunately has come to a close now and then to have a rap party we closed it off uh, at the Queen's Head in Islington which is basically a really amazing venue. <laughs> I mean, the relay for me was, was fantastic in the sense that I got to perform and I got to uh, work in front of completely different audiences. Rise and rise and rise and rise and rise and rise and 
<laughs> Dan Su, I don't know where to start really. I mean, the guy is absolutely phenomenal. He's incredible, his energy, uh, his vision, but equally at the same time, he's brought many amazing musicians together. And I think uh, something special happened that night. And it, I'm really happy that I was a part of it. Hip hop was a culture, it spread the movement, it was about dance, it was about expression, it's about being able to use lyrics in a way that paint lovely pictures. For me, this is the album that most defines who I am and how I've grown. I'm a freestyle artist, really, so I just freestyle, make things up on the spot. Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I save up bits of money and put that aside in order to be able to do things I have done for a while. Uh, I mean, as a youth worker now, I don't get paid badly. So it's all about stepping stones, really. I mean, the minute you've got a physical product in your hand, you can sell it. Because for me, music's about doing stuff for yourself. It's about DIY. It's about being able to focus and really get into what your message is. It's, it's bigger than putting a record out and trying to sell X amount of copies. It's actually a feeling. It's an emotion. Yeah, we keep moving. We keep rising up. We keep moving until the change of tides. Adrian! <laughs> Goddamn wrecking machine! <laughs> Everyone's always saying to me, you're not 36, you're not 36. Yes, I am. I'm 36, I'm nearly 37. I've been doing something I love for 20 years. Look at me. I met him at an event. He was doing some workshop with kids. He's dragged me along to various amounts of things to help him out. and. Now I'm here helping him out on his and album. And he freestyled that night with me, like when we did the workshop for the kids, because the kids gave us loads of post-it notes, so we went all the way through it. And I can't say... Disestablishmentarianism. Okay, now your turn. Disestablishmentarianism? Is that right? Disestablishmentarianism. Let the music industry be what it is, it's suffering right now. But yeah, I've been touted in front of the biggest people, uh, you know, in really plush, amazing rooms where there's three of them sitting there like they're on X Factor and you've got to do a performance to three people who are then like sitting there with their clipboards, sort of working out whether you're the right type of person. It's like, this is a piece of music. This is my career. This is something I've worked hard on. This is something I've put a lot of love into. I am serious about this. This is why I'm here in front of you now, performing to you in a stagnant, stale, gray room where you could have come to the event and seen us the night before, performing in front of an audience where there's a vibe and you can actually see what's really genuinely going on. <laughs> Everything to me just seems so wrong about the industry. It's kind of like, you're gonna pay a hundred grand to find out what people think of our music. So like surely just let's press up a hundred grand's worth of CDs and get out there and sell them. It was just figures, numbers and marketing. But you've got amazing artists out there and I need to know and want to know why it is I don't see those artists doing the shows that they deserve. We keep it moving, we keep rising high, we keep it moving until the change of tides. We keep it moving, we keep rising high, we keep it moving until the day we fly, we keep it moving. People aren't ignorant to what we do. They just don't have the opportunity to be able to hear and see and feel what we do. So inevitably, at some point, there'll be a tip. And when that tip happens, people will only talk about conscious projects only talk about good things and they won't care about the big brothers, the X Factors, because they will realise it's great entertainment but there's no substance to it and in most cases most of the artists will just fade away. Music is about soul, it's about expression and it's about spreading a word. The music industry is about trying to capitalise on something, monetize it and make as much as possible. I'm into this side, the soul side. I'm not into the industry side. We're in Pimlico Academy and Lyrics Organics are running some workshops for the challenge. Oh, man, honestly, dude, like, sometimes I just think to myself, like, it's too easy, man, with these NBA players. It does my head in. And that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs>
Natty is just one of the happiest, bubbly, like incredible people I've ever met. I don't think he, it's possible for him ever to get upset or be down. Um, he just puts me in such a good mood whenever I see him and his, his outlook on life and positivity is incredible. And it's so good to have people like him working with kids. Hello guys, how are we doing? Yeah. Um, we're really excited to be here. My name is Dan. Dan is a little bit quieter, but I think he's got such a, a brain. He's always thinking about things. He's like the mastermind behind things, um, and I feel very safe around him. The system's screwed. Got barely any food and barely any money. Got bare single mummies with bare empty tummies. And barely give their children before their time and crime yeah, continues to climb. The economic epidemic escalating quicker. Got poorer getting oh, poorer, the richer getting thicker. The BMP was in, and now they're winking. What was Martin Luther King be thinking? So we were approached to uh, deliver workshops for today as a celebration for the young people achieving what they have over the, over the summer period. And as a result of Dan and I teaming up, we're now getting equipment from different organisations, we're getting more support from people, and we're getting inundated with different workshops, which is fantastic. So Michael here and Chris here are gonna be your DJ tutors today. They have just flown directly from Brooklyn, New York. So we've got four workshops going on today. We've got streetball, we've got beatboxing, we've Grace Savage, who you might have seen from the Relay Tour, we've got music production, and we've got DJing run by the gentlemen who've come over from New York, especially for today. I've been learning loads of new games with Grace Savage, so that was pretty fun. Number six, number two. Number two, number six. Oh! <laughs> The fact is that they're joining the circle and they're trying something they haven't done before with people they possibly haven't met before. I'm hoping to just uh, introduce some people to beatboxing, maybe yeah, open people's minds to it, using their mouths and bodies in a new way. I wasn't classically trained in the sense that I can't play an instrument or I can't read a music sheet. I didn't think I could teach people the meaning of music but it's happening. I mean for me I'm inspired all the time it's not just like today I'm inspired by it. I do a lot of work with disability projects I do a lot of work with different charities with different young people with different issues when I'm 70 80 I want to have memories so I can sit there like rocking on my chair and just like you know have so many memories that I'm never bored my mind can do what my legs and my arms might not do anymore what we're able to do is kind of break down that, those barriers and allow people to explore themselves a bit more without the pre-existing relationship they might have with teachers or uh, their record. That is irrelevant to us here. It's about people exploring themselves from a creative level and from the heart and just being able to do things that uh, you can't always teach in school. I mean, my biggest issue working with young people is the labels that they're given before they come to work with me. Like, if we stop that labelling and the media stop jumping on it so much and within the education system we had a little bit more freedom, I think it would be better for everybody, including the teachers, because I think there's a lot of pressure on teachers now to complete paperwork and uh, to make sure that there's uh, discipline and really, really strict boundaries, as opposed to doing what they should be doing and what we should all be doing, which is really trying to get as much creativity out of young people and allow them to grow. We get to know each other, we like family now. Music kind of transcends current affairs or political divisions or religious affiliations or anything and being able to do something where we are teaching that to people is a blessing. If I could do this forever, I'd be really happy. Immediately I picked up the vibe, it was amazing. I loved just everything about today. Teachers usually they stand by the door or the wall and they just talk and talk and talk to you. It wasn't a teacher-student relationship, it was a I'm here to teach you a skill, um, this is what I do and I do it because I enjoy it and they kind of showed us why they enjoy it and we understood that. Because school is more theoretical while well, I'm more practical and because this is all practical based I loved it more. So if everyone from today takes this amazing day and amazing experience and time that's been spent together and turns it into something that could eventually help them set up small businesses or go into employment, then I think it's a really amazing thing and I think it will not just inspire the young people that are here today, they will then go on and tell people what a wonderful day they've had and hopefully it will inspire others so they'll pass on that energy and that, that positive energy in a really great way.
So tonight we are in the conference suite at the British Library celebrating Jamaica's 50th year of independence. There's um, a lot of material I've been living with for a long time and lots of people haven't heard it so I need to stick with it but I'm also like on the next chapter kind of oh I want to work on that new project. You know being four or five years old and labelling your fingers one to five and getting a handle on where the notes are and harmony and chords like all of that is a, such a gradual process until you don't have to think about it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have fun tonight. It's, it's an ongoing thing. I am under no illusions that um, <laughs> I am, uh, even having done a master's at the top of my game, I've got a long way to go. So from here on out, the real learning, like real life on the job learning comes and starts now. Pretty much anything is inspiration. Inspiration comes from any and everything, but mainly in my songs, they tend to be um, experiences, people I know. My dad's an actor, but my mum's a school teacher. They've both, and my grandparents have just encouraged me to be who I am and have never uh, made me feel as though I was doing anything uh, uh, wrong or incorrectly. So they've been there practically and emotionally and financially. It's probably the triangle. <laughs> So that is the master plan, you know, stay with them so I can save and then move out. I see you in me more than the family. I feel successful because I'm trying. Along the way, yeah, it'd be lovely to have a big house or something, but actually I'm pretty much happy day to day as life goes on, so um, I try not to think about the things I don't have. On the one hand, yeah, I've entertained ideas of being famous, but what does that actually mean for your personal freedom? What does that mean for the people around you? What does that mean for your everyday life? Actually, it might give you less freedom. As long as I like the performance and I've enjoyed myself and I've tried my best to communicate something to them, they can take it or leave it, you know? Life goes on and I, I've got another 10 gigs to do. <laughs> I'm on a quest to, to grow and build my own audience and um, bit by bit, gig by gig, uh, territory by territory. So I hope that in five years time I'll surprise myself with what I'll be doing. You know, I'll always be a cellist, I'll always be a vocalist, but I hope I'll be a dancer and an actress and you know, a pianist and who knows, a guitarist. So I'm not tied to, to labels, this is my starting point. I thought about my Jamaican heritage and how secondhand it feels, if I'm honest. Um, passed down from my grandparents, I love them dearly. But um, there's a first-hand connection that I need to make. Um, it's been a long time since I've been to Jamaica and today is, is a beautiful celebration of everything that I have to look forward to in that respect, so thank you. I didn't know what to expect. I wasn't sure. I saw the cello and I thought, this is going to be different. And then she began to sing with it. And when it came out, it was like, wow. So it needs to be heard. It needs to be exposed. And there's no way people can hear that and not fall in love with it. This is the part I love as well, like connecting with people individually after the performance. And I, f I feel like, um, you know, that's what this whole thing's about, making people feel something and, and getting them to um, take themselves out of what would be an ordinary thought pattern, really. Makes a change from X Factor and all the rest of it, doesn't it? This is real stuff, not manufactured stuff. This is real stuff.
Yeah, DIY gang, no crutches, done no. Today we're in Oxford. I suppose this is a, quite an important place for me because Realist, for me, this is kind of where my music career started. You know, I came here for university, was doing my law degree, started making music up here. So yeah, I love Oxford. I love it here. And it's nice to see you're off the crutches. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to be off the crutches, to be honest. It was getting a bit tiring in more ways than one, but I'm still healing up. You know, still got a lot of physio to do. Um, I'm walking around a lot more, able to carry things as you can see. So yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to be walking. Since we last met, um, my newest album's come out. It's called Cut the Ball Spit. Obviously, I've been, you know, traveling around selling my CDs myself a lot. Um, managed to get it on iTunes, but the great thing is now uh, some of the retailers are picking it up as well. HMV for one, which is fantastic for me because I buy my stuff there. So um, it's a bit trippy to see my album on the shelf. As you can see, it's starting to rain. I don't really feel like getting wet. So um, why don't we go in HMV, see if they've got the album. There it is. Yeah. It's so good just to see an HMV just because it's independently done and it's, um, you know, it's, it's just hard work and it kind of makes it a little bit more official. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's all well and good selling them myself, but um, when it's actually in a, an official retailer, that's, it sort of confirms that, yeah, you're doing something right. So in terms of the actual business side of it, I've been doing it so long now that I know effectively how to put together a very solid release and get it out there. And the feedback has been great so far. People who have never met me before who've bought my album from me personally have come back and said they've loved it. I was in Norwich um, one time and um, they actually had the album on the shelf. There was one guy looking around in the urban section and I asked him what he's looking for. He said he's just having a look around. I said, well, check out my album. He, he looked at it, looked at me and went and bought it and emailed me probably about two hours later and said he absolutely loved it. Stiff door. Hey, Tom. So, yeah, this is where I plan world domination. A lot of this stuff actually came from China. A lot of my weapons come from China. Um, and they let me through customs with it. We have this one. Me and my brother spent one, um, one summer at my grandma's throwing apples at each other and slicing them in half with, with the sword. So that was pretty fun. These weapons haven't been used to hurt people, have they? No, um, I'm saying that on camera, no, they haven't. But um, if you don't buy a CD, you never know. So um, in here we've got more caps, we have posters, DIY gang t-shirts as well. Um, people buy into the merchandise once they've bought into you. Right now the merchandise isn't my main source of income, but hopefully at some point it will be. You know, eventually I don't want to be on, out on the street, you know, selling CDs. I'd rather be in the studio making more music. But it's mainly for me, to be honest. Yeah. I just like wearing my name on my stuff. I need, wow. to get some, yeah, I need to get some shadow underwear and shoes and trousers and I'm done. Oh, and socks as well. Can't forget the socks. <laughs> yeah. I like to speak with people on the street, but also like to maintain that interaction online. I think that's, that's where social media really comes in for me. Right now, it is very difficult to get my sort of music played because it's not commercial enough. I'm proving every day that there are people out there who would buy it but it's not the traditional route, it's not the, it's not the way that you're supposed to do it because it doesn't involve the, the people who like to make their money. So, you know, I'm not really bothered because those sort of people I don't need involved. Now let me begin. There's people in the world that get under my skin. Cause people in the world can't get over my skin. From within I've been struggling to win. I'm struggling to grin. They think I'm running into sin. They put a wall between us like we Berlin. So I wish I could gin to be out of this thing. Cause the looks and the treatment is wearing so thin. Look out, there's a black man coming. People in wheelchairs get up and start running. Grab your bags, grab your purses, grab something. The whole mentality of of the young people is that anything should come quickly and free and very easily. You know, you can sing a little bit, so I'll go on X Factor and you'll be famous. You know, that that's not how it should be. The problem with being signed is that suddenly you have a lot more people who have invested money um, and that's what people don't realise. You know, they just see the the, the gross figure and they don't understand that net is actually the one you need to be looking at and I can't take that you know when it's my music it's my creativity and it's my path you can't tell me that I need to sound like this or I need to write about this because it won't work I mean you will fall out I'm happy to be independent is what I'm trying to say people 
people need to know that there are people like me out there. For nearly anything in life that you want to, you want to achieve, you have to put the work in because nobody else is going to do it for you. In this, in this current climate, where it's so difficult to get a job, it's so difficult to get an opportunity, you need to create it yourself and you need to do it yourself, which is why it's DIY gang, that's what it's about. It doesn't matter who tells you you can't do it, if you need to do this dream, if you've got something that you want to do, you get up, you get out there and you make it happen, you get stronger all day, every day. People came out, they spent their money and they came out to see a show. So you give them a show, you can't underperform just because there weren't as many people as you wanted there, you know what I mean? So yeah, you give those people a show, they go away, they tell their friends, they come back, they bring some more people, that's how it works. Um, you've got to be realistic as an artist, you've got to, you can't just expect these things to happen out of nowhere. This is not an overnight thing, you've got to put the work in, you've got to keep plugging away at it, and then one day, hundreds of people will turn up, but that isn't, this isn't that day. I'm glad that people get to see the progression as an independent artist. It starts somewhere, and this is where it's starting, but it's definitely not gonna finish here. <laughs> Call that DIY gang, please. We're down at Somerset House, and we're going to see the Best of Illustration exhibition. It's nice to get a bit of a break from everything that we do uh, on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. Um, it's just nice to be out at galleries and get some stimulation and kind of have some creative input other than music and poetry. Also, that's quite common for Dan and I. We don't tend to choose to go and watch some rom-com. We always no. like, oh my God, have you heard about this? Have you seen this? I want to go to this. And it's a constant battle to actually try and fit in all the things we want to see and experience. Yeah, and stuff, so. culture vultures a little bit, I guess, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Bit. It's amazing. There's no reason why, um, because art is a medium uh, necessarily based on paper, that it can't translate to someone who would listen to music that's going into their ears via a different form of communication. I mean, always with Limits Organics, when you walk into a show, it's always been about stimulating the senses. And if we can stimulate the visual senses as well as everything else, then that's amazing. And I think that's what we prove on the Relay Tour, that we can mix up the beatboxing and the poetry and, and the art in, in different forms because we've had the foundation of working together incredibly well before um, anything romantically happened. Um, that's why we're in quite a unique and unusual position. I think a lot of people from the outside looking in find it almost uh, dumbstruck by the idea that we can be working together on such a regular and intense basis. Well, yeah, this that's, is beautiful. That's the, oh, that's the no, digital no, no, collage. No, collage, you're literally right, yeah. placing your layers over each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it uh, a blessed and unique position to be in and actually we're, uh, we're a really unusual crossroads for the UK and London where it's now the norm to either have mixed race heritage or have uh, mixed race couples or basically this kind of melting pot of cultures. I studied management science at university partly because I'm from a Chinese background I kind of got edge down that path uh, and when I got to university I realised it wasn't for me and that's how things kind of kicked off for me musically. Lyrics! Organics! Lyrics! Organics! Lyrics! Organics! Wake up and start dreaming! When I go into Lyrics Organics it's like me going from a small barn house and running into a field where I can do whatever I want. Bar, bar, black sheep in a white shirt. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Talking queer. Tiki boards and email chains. Never need to speak to real people again. My dad said to me recently that he has no idea w what I'm doing. He has no understanding of what's going on, but he sees that I'm happy and he sees that it's doing well. So he's cool with it. We created the state of freedom in the London That's where you're going, not really where you come from To stay strong, the long road carry us Along with the boundaries, break down the barriers Of various nations, races, religions The places, the faces of hate and division They're not going to understand it until they step through that door and see it And then not, nor is anyone else, not my, even my closest friends Are going to understand what it really is about Meet the characters and hear the music and see the art and so on and so forth Now any other day, I can't afford shit so I build a spliff and hit self a jizz. A supermarket sweep up on Bond Street, set up speakers, rave up in Hamleys. 
I used to go raving every weekend, maybe a few, few times a week. Um, and now I go maybe once a month, if that. Um, and it's just a matter of time and having more important things to do. I'm in a position where people look up to me, especially young people. So I do not condone drugs at all. Um, but I do condone people having the freedom to express themselves in environments in which they feel comfortable with. I have no problems with um, going down routes that I did and feeling like I've come out a normal person. I know a lot of people who haven't come out normal people, which is why I wouldn't condone it. It very much depends on the person. The kids stuck upon the slippery slope In so provoke a soul Provoke gun smoke See murder she wrote The typical result Another body cold Under 20 years old No one's sold So my day job is working at Transport for London Being a team administrator Slash office manager My normal working day would be Go to work for eight, nine hours a day uh, And then do Lewis Organics work for about Three or four hours uh, and then maybe I get to chill at about one in the morning. Kill a dapper, D run up in the vicinity. Velocity, feet and get me turned into history. I'm gonna let red, this is roof another one, a piece of me. Said I take over the venue, be the top celebrity. In an ideal world, I, I would quit Transport for London, um, but I've got to eat and pay the rent. There's no escaping that fact, but ultimately I will be going freelance. Always previously, it's been either Lewis Organics or Creative. I can't do both at the same time. The MC in poetry stuff is merely uh, creative folly for me just to explore because it's in me and I'd, I'd like to kind of experiment with it and do things with it and it would be a waste if I didn't. Um, but that's not a priority. The priority has been and always will be other people. So yeah, Lyrics Organics. Yeah. I'm rising, I'm rising, I never will be hiding Government can tell me lies but I will keep on riding I will keep on climbing, looking for the new place When I'm on the microphone you know I've got a new face, a new race So how's everybody out there feeling? I take your rhymes and deliver them back to you from the floor to the ceiling Some MCs might say the floor to ceiling line is kind of whack What are you saying guys? I'm just freestyling, get off my back When I'm on the microphone you know I'm just chat 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 That's how I do so nowadays you know we will relax I keep it intact, yeah we keep it vibing Everybody worldwide, you know we just keep climbing It's how we do, cause you know we keep rising So how you feeling boys, it's just keep on rising We reach the sky As the next six months will pan out Basically I'm leaving Transport for London Temporarily at least, on a career break, a sabbatical uh, Gonna go travelling to Southeast Asia and China. I don't have a great sense of my roots uh, or my family ancestry. That's something I really want to at least touch upon. Uh, but also just to get a lot of inspiration and kind of meditation of sorts and um, peace. We are now in Ashford in Kent which is uh, where my parents live, where the family home is. Let him in, he's all right. So, welcome to my pit. Unfortunately, uh, it's a total mess at the moment because all of this stuff's come from London, from our office. Uh, it was time to move out and at the moment I'm a bit undecided about where we want to go and I'm hoping that I'll link up with Lyrics Organics and Dan and I will get an office from, from April and then things will start running smoother. I, my family is amazing, yeah. I mean, my mum and my dad have always supported me. It's a shame they don't really understand the music game or the, the, that industry. I reckon it must have been eight years until they fully understood what I did and that's because they came to a gig and they saw it. I think they were quite shocked because it was a huge street party. I remember seeing my mum and dad in the middle of the audience and they kind of looked like, oh wow, this is what he does for a living. So this is how I used to go to school. This used to be a wall. I used to jump over the wall into the back of the garage where I'd already the night before bagged up some alternative clothes. So I used to jump over, change out my school uniform, put on the alternative clothes, and I used to head right down that alley next to the cricket field. 
I never knew he was bunking off school. And obviously, I don't know whether he wrote letters to the school to say he was sick or something, because we never had anything back from school to say that he wasn't there. It makes you mind boggle, really, when you think about it, because my house is just there, really and truly. I should have just said to my parents, like, you know what, I'm not going to school anymore. I'm going to stay at home and study something worthwhile, learn about the real histories of life instead of the ones that are dictated to you from course books. I don't think I've had many miserable times there. A lot of drunk times there, being a young person. School was very regimental. You have to do what you're told. And he had an incident happened at school one day where he, was, he and his friend were accused of doing something that they hadn't done. Apparently, we're meant to have uh, picked on a prefect, like picked on him. There was no allegation that he'd been punched. There was no allegation of anything else. And this teacher actually got hold of Nathaniel and his friend and sort of threw them across the classroom and they hit the radiator. And they both suffered with asthma and it affected them. And from that day on, Nathaniel said, he, they don't believe what we tell them when we tell them the truth. And after that, he just didn't like being told what to do. So when he whacked my head on the radiator, he could have like killed me. But thankfully he didn't. He just split my head open. Now, if the kid goes home and complains to the parents, I expect the next day to see the parents at the school. And I expect to be sacked, yeah, because you can't behave like that. And all of those things were flawed. None of that stuff happened, you know? None, none of that happened. It's just a lie. The world's full up, full up of liars. Adults masquerading as people of authority uh, who are meant to be doing good things with young people who aren't doing good things. But that definitely shaped my distrust in, uh, in adults. So for me, it was kind of like, I didn't need anyone else. I just needed to be on my own. So I just wanted to write. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to just write lyrics. I wanted to get my emotions and my feelings down on paper. So, um, yeah, it was just an escapism, I guess. And I think it was better for me to be here, like, chilling and doing something that, I, well, it's been constructive. I've got a full-time job because of bunking off school and hanging in this park. So the last thing I ever have done on planet Earth is be a teacher based on the experience I had with teachers because I didn't have any support. I was on my own. Like, and really and genuinely and truly, if you think about it, or if I think about it, I've been on my own all, on all my journey throughout my life. But then having said that, I thoroughly enjoy my job and I really feel that I'm in the best position to be able to explain to young people and furthermore, not to lie to our students. But you need to really, really find ways of engaging those young people and teaching it in a way that it stays in, people, it stays in young people's minds. I mean, look at, the, look at the young people I work with now. They're dealing with situations a hundred times worse, you know? Because in London and in the inner city areas, you're dealing with gun and knife crime constantly. We didn't want him to go to London at 18 because we thought he was far too young, but he decided he was going, and from there he's progressed into a lovely young man, really. And we're very proud of him. I mean, all in all, as, as a company, as an organisation, we must have sold like 50, 60,000 records, you know, in my lifetime, which, uh, you know, it ain't that bad, really, when you think it's all been done independently. Nothing's been put out through a major. Nothing's been put out with a major budget. Nothing's been marketed with a major budget. Everything's been done hand to hand out there, putting on shows, building up things slowly. And he does all this charity work now, which I never thought he would go into all of that. And he says to me, he's not a materialistic lad. He says to him, Mum, I don't mind if I don't, if I had plenty of money, he said, I do all these charities for free. It's been a really huge uh, year for, for all of us. I mean, actively out there, constantly gigging, touring, doing shows. And I think for me, music is my heartbeat. Music is my soul. Music is what keeps me going. And music has been there, is there, and will always be there. Sound. Power. Words are the sound of power. Ring the alarm, the power is gone. The only word we have is our. Signs. Symbols. Sequences of syllables. Crafted into sentences, we make sense. We create meaning. We are the architects of our own reality. 
Queen's Head's really intimate and there's been a lot of amazing artists that have performed at the Queen's Head from Ed Sheeran for Lyrics Organics to Maverick Sabre for Lyrics Organics and tonight like, we're bringing a whole next leap of artists. I say go, go get it, I go, go grab it, make a speakers vibrate like a Soho rabbit. The cold flow addict with a dope rose habit, folks coming up shorter than Frodo Baggins. I love you since I knew ya. I love it. I love this stage. I think it's the second or third time that I've performed here and it's always warm and it just feels like it's set up for people to just be, you know, there with you as you're performing and I loved it. It was rare for me to be able to do a cohesive set on this Lyrics Organic stage which I tend to shy away from and I was really happy with how it came across in the reception. Wow, it feels nice. The beauty of music is that it does reflect life, my being as an artist, and collectively I hope that the experience of coming to my gig will give you a space in which to be yourself and ask yourself questions and, and just to realise how connected we are. Waiting for the day to break and polish your song Beautiful as it always was it is something that transcends language barriers, you know, you can listen to music regardless of where you're from, regardless of who you are and still enjoy it, you know, and I think that's so important and when you have that mic in your hand, you literally control the vibe, you control the crowd and you, you're responsible for entertaining them and that is a powerful feeling, it's a, it's a powerful responsibility, one that should be taken seriously and I do take it very seriously and that's why I love music because I get a chance to connect with people, entertain them and share my personal view with them. I love jazz, that's a fact, don't let me ruin your beats, here we go, yeah, all oh, your demographic. And when I'm on the rhythm, I freestyle, I got static. What, you never heard of me? Well, that's because I chill at home, I hang with my mum and I don't want to be a celebrity. By well, the last few months, going from the Lyrics Organics Relay Tour through to the development of the workshops, through to this kind of culmination of going travelling and experience the personal journey. Uh, it's beautiful, man. It's what it's all about. And I feel like I'm in control of my own destiny. Just looking forward to what's holes in store next. But I think for him, it's time for him to have a bit of a break. I'll also be away for a good month or two during that period as well. So I think for all of us, it's good to recoup, get that energy together and keep using words and sound and power to reach out to everybody out there. So I'm just hoping that from here on out, I'll continue in the same vein and um, just keep delivering the best of myself to like new audiences and you know, taking everyone else that's been with me along with me. So it's been incredible. Thank you. Please give it up for Ayana Whitson. Justin. I uh, just want to thank you for, for sharing the journey really and just having a look into what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because it's not easy. The fan base is growing, um, you know, I'm growing as an artist and I, I love the journey and I can't wait to see what, what happens next. And with my feet on the ground, I honour you, there you are. And with my head in the clouds, I am dreaming of ten years from now. Pressure makes them incompetent, angry or wild, they suffer incontinence, Africa. 